Good morning, Clayton Library friends and guests. Welcome to our August meeting. I'm so glad to see so many of you joining us. I wish you could see me, but so far we've not been successful in getting my camera to work on this platform. And I don't look exactly the same as that, but close. Even though I have now participated in many webinars and even though I'm sitting at my dining room table, I still have a vision of all of you sitting together in the carriage house at Clayton and not at your desks and dining room table. I know that's crazy because in fact, I know that some of you aren't in Houston or even in Texas. We are very appreciative of the support of the Texas State Genealogical Society that allows us to meet together wherever we are. Today, we have 80 people registered, so we're very fortunate to have their help to get so many of us to be together. As you know, we don't expect to be able to meet in person anytime soon. We're trying many new ways to stay in touch, webinars, weekly Zoom meetings, our Facebook page, and don't forget to check out our Clayton Library Friends website. We post all of our events there and update them frequently. If you need to know a date or need to register for an event, you can find that information and the link on our website. You can also find current and past newsletters on that website. All of those things are happening and being communicated to you by the 10 members of the Clayton Library Friends Board. Even though you can't see them at work, I want you to know that each of them is working behind the scenes to keep our organization strong. We're fortunate to have such a great board. And here is one of them. I'm gonna turn this over to Nick Cimino, our program chair. I want to acknowledge Nick, along with board member Jessica Collins for their leadership of our weekly Zoom meeting, Genealogy Face-to-Face. -face. They've done a great job. Thank you, and here you go, Nick. Thank you, Linda. And ahoy, mateys. I guess this is about as close as I ever came to being a captain of a ship, uh, sitting on the porch in Sacramento in our alley apartment when I was a child. So excited to tell you about our upcoming programs. So this, you can see, is going to be the highlight of our year in terms of programming. We're going to have the Photo Detective Roadshow. And um, happy to say we got the contract signed with Maureen Taylor yesterday, and um, we are receiving photos as it describes below here of how you can submit a photo. Um, we need more photos, folks, so please keep those submissions coming. We'll, we'll send a notification out when. Um, the submission process is closed, but uh, for now I need more photos. So please send those photos on. And um, if you have any questions about this program, uh, you can put those into the question format and we'll try to address those during the meeting. All right, so you don't have to wait till November to participate in the Clayton Library Friends programming. We have a weekly session on Thursdays at two o'clock, and you can see upcoming, we have uh, Mitch Clendon coming to do a preview of the program that is being offered by the Clayton Library staff on the fourth Friday on mobile computing. So that'll be interesting. And we have a full slate of programs for you uh, planned through August and September. So every week there's something new, um, come and check us out. So at this point, I would like to introduce to you our speaker, who I'm pretty sure is known to, oh, about 90% of us at least, but uh, she has been, Susan Kaufman is the manager of the Clayton Library. She has been for the last 14 years. She has been a genealogy librarian for 30 years, and she is an award-winning gene genealogy librarian. Uh, she's got the trifecta of awards, such names as Philby, Boxtruck, 
and the Texas State Genealogical Society Fellow. All those awards have been accrued by Ms. Kaufman. So, Sue, we're really looking forward to hearing about the state of the labyrinth. Well, okay. Hey, everybody. So let me see. I'm going to try and share my camera for a second just because I wanted to say hello to everybody. And <laughs> as an extrovert, I really, really miss everybody. And I hope that everybody is doing a great job on their family history because that's pretty much all you have to do right now because you've done all the cleaning and all the laundry. So um, I just wanted to say hi and bring hello from all of us at the library and we are still here to help you. And so that is what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about um, what we're doing, how we're operating a little different. And I just wanted to thank everybody for all the support that I've gotten in the past 14 years. And 14 years, honestly, is, I'm gonna turn on my camera now, 14 years is longer than any place that I have ever been. And whoops, no, it's off now. Sorry, it looks just like technology. Hang on. And right, recently, what a long short. It's been short, but it's been a long, strange trip it's been. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, today's overview is just like we've done in the past years. We're going to do some statistics. The statistics that I'll be showing actually are um, FY20, which we just got out of. Uh, FY21 started July 1st. So the statistics will be July through March because those are the comparative statistics that we have. Um, I do have some full statistics from FY19, but they're kind of difficult to compare to because of what we've been through, but um, what we've been doing since and during the event and how we can still all be together during and after what I'm calling the event. So let's talk about some comparative statistics right away. And as I mentioned, they're going to be July through March. This is the statistics, we call them shelving, but these were materials used. And I would like to mention that um, for comparativeness, I did use the Houston Metropolitan Research Center and Clayton, just to see how many materials people were pulling off the shelf in the case of the Houston Metropolitan Research Center, archival collections that they're pulling for people. Um, and you can see that in FY, uh, the blue is, uh, maybe the blue is Clayton. So in FY20 from July through March, Clayton, and this was the majority of volunteers, thank you very much, what we miss you guys. <laughs> we miss sitting in the carriage house too with you guys. So we uh, shelved about 23,000 pieces of material. In FY19, the full year of statistics, 26,000 were shelved. So we were right on track. HMRC conversely uh, shelved 13,000 during that time period, but they are shelving archival material. Um, our material are books, so they count things a little differently, but I didn't want to compare us in the grand scheme of things to neighborhood libraries, but we can compare ourselves to last year, 19 to 20. So we were right on track. This is July through March, um, comparative of FY19, FY20. Reference questions, FY, FY19, we saw a little bit more reference questions. 19 is in blue, 20 is in the orange. So in that time period, we had a little more reference questions. We had more visitors. And that actually, um, interestingly, although, you know, successively it goes down each year. Um, and the reference questions were 11,452 in July. So about 11.5 thousand. And FY20 for that time period, it was 10,000. Our visitors in July through March of FY19, so that's July of July of 2018 through March of 2019 was about almost 22,000. July of 2019 through March of 20 was 16,000. So 20,000 and 20,000 versus 16,000 down. 
Uh, service hours, how many hours were we open in that time period? In FY19, we had 14,000 service hours in July through March. The total for the year, which we were open the whole year, is about 19,000. So on the on the average, in a full service year, we're open about 19,000, I'm sorry, 1,900, 1,900 hours. FY19 was 1,400. Total year in FY19 was 1,800. July through March was 13,000. Comparatively, we had, thir I'm sorry, 1,300. 1,300 hours, July through March, before the pandemic hit, 1,400 July through March the year before. Volunteer hours, July through March of 19 was 3,500. July through March of 20 was 3,500. I don't know how you guys got in all your volunteer hours. Same very nicely total year was um 4800 for the full fiscal year so comparatively the volunteer hours you guys stuck out and hung out all the way through march so we really appreciate that it's hard it's hard i guess the bottom line would be is that our numbers were down in terms of visitors obviously our numbers were down in terms of users of reference questions which has been the same throughout the years. People are sitting at home a little more, I think. This, interestingly, these are our database statistics. The top line here is FY19. Let me hear the top line here is FY19. This is FY20 and this is FY21, the current year that we're in. 19th century newspapers is a remote database. You can tell which ones are available remote because April, May, and June, there are numbers in FY20. American Civil War and Diaries is a bad one to look at. These are all remote databases. Look at the numbers for Ancestry in April, May, and June. Ancestry was available remotely through September and I have heard, heard rumblings from ProQuest that the Ancestry Library Edition will be available through the end of the year. Those are just rumblings. Find my past as an example. It's Clayton only, so you can see the last three months, no hits. Fold three. Now there are zeros here because there are years that we, you know, the collection of statistics sometimes doesn't happen in the, in the or larger organization. Look at the hits in June on fold three, 3,700. Heritage Quest, same thing. Genealogy Connect, which I'll talk about in a little while. And if you were on, um, have been on Genea uh, Clayton Library Friends face-to-face, -face, you know that we had a book talk from Psychic Roots that was available in there. My Heritage is a, is a database that is available remotely zero, probably because the statistics number hadn't come in yet. Newspaper Archive and the Digital Sanborn Maps. So obviously, hits on the databases remotely because we can't get into the library to do the books. Clayton Library Friends contributions this past year, $40,000 for materials, bindery, and staff education. We attended Roots Tech, we attended national conferences, we attended the Texas State Genealogical Society, and we thank the friends for that. $40,000 in the renovation technology, and I'm gonna show you some pictures of the renovation coming up next. Renovation technology included meeting room televisions, um, some uh, basically uh, electronic blackboards called Samsung Flips, a really nice laptop for the meeting room, um, uh, um, laptops for the for the new reference desk and a large number of other things that go with all that technology and installation of that technology. We would not have had all this technology if the contribution was not there and it's just amazing. You'll see. Of course, the contribution by the friends in of itself at national and local conferences, selling books, Pat Metcalf and John Dora, and everyone else, Jessica and everyone else that supports that 
It's amazing. And Pat is still working on the book sale. She's gotten some phone calls and we do curbside service when she gets orders for books. So we go pull the books for and she picks them up in her car and then sends them out. And then in the 14 years, um, there have been overall contributions totaling $7.6 million. Quite frankly, we would not be who we are if it wasn't for the Clayton Library friends. And I am very grateful and very proud to be with the Clayton Library Friends and to partner with the Clayton Library Friends and to marshal the mission of the Friends. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing partnership. All right, let's talk about the renovation. So what's going on? Um, you might've been on the Clayton Library face-to-face -face a few weeks ago when my colleague Mitch went outside and showed some of the new renovations that we have in the library. This is what the entryway looks like. Uh, you can see we got a new garbage can. That's kind of exciting. So walking into the building, um, we have some new cement out in front. You might remember that the uh, entryway was kind of treacherous with, we always had the pile on there because there was a lip. So that has happened, um, some other new cement. This is what the inside of the library looks like. <clears throat> we have new carpet, we have new furniture. The computers, we are getting all new in one computers. These are still the old computers, but this is the configuration of the computers. This is what they call a pony wall. And on this side where you can see the raw side, there'll be slat walls where we can put displays or we can put brochures and notices. Um, and so it creates sort of a technology area. This is looking from the stairs, obviously. This is our new meeting room. Right here is a collaboration table and I have a better picture of it. This is our reference desk. Here's the other side of the pony wall. This is the new books and the book sale shelves. This is when you walk into the building um, and you walk in the door into the lobby. This is a seating area, but then these are, this is a collaboration table. This technology was also provided by the friends where small groups, <clears throat> when, when we let the library, when people can come back into the library, and let's just tell you right now, we have no idea when that will be, but we'll be able to collaborate and work together. We will also be able to show people things at that desk. This is our new meeting room. And I show this because this is glass on the outside. I think some of you, we were open and I think the glass was up. I think some of you have seen that. And it is kind of cool glass. There's a design on it. And so that is nice. And then of course the meeting room um, there. And then we have two working technology televisions where we can broadcast. So when you're sitting in the meeting room, you might've seen those too, uh, just to let you see that it's all done. And then we have teddy bears to celebrate the medical center. And then a thank you on the window for the people in the medical center, again, reaching out to our community in any way that we can, why the doors are not open. This is the reference desk. This was actually taken in October because we were, uh, no, I don't know why. Oh, no, we, I, it wasn't in October. I don't think we had it in October. I can't tell you why we, unless we were just going through stuff and we decided to dress up the desk just for something to do. Here's our skeleton guy. We, these, are, these are carpet tiles. This is the reference desk. This is counter height. So now when you come in and you put your stuff on the counter, you won't have to bend over. This is ADA compliant. And then this is what the reference desk looks like from the back. Now, interestingly, what's happening this week is that all these windows, this is what they call the storefront, and they're taking out these windows and we're gonna have full light glass. So there won't be the bars going across. And you can see we got new lighting in the ceiling. They are shaped like, a, I guess it's six-sided. So it's like a, um, stop sign. So all this glass will not have these bars. They'll be full light. This door that we walked in before will turn. So when you open up the door, you're facing the reference desk. These computers will be laptops. So that's happening this week. The construction is almost over. This is our walking track. This is looking back from <laughs> It's, it's, it's the carpet. I think you guys have seen the carpets, but just in case you haven't, um, uh, this is our track that we 
walk up and down for exercise now while we're in the building, but this is looking out from the back room. The walls look a different color, but they are not. It's just the photo. This is looking out to what the lobby, to where the patio was. There is no more patio. We now have a emergency exit door there. And then there is ground cover that has been planted here. We have a new gate out in front of the house. It's simply gorgeous. It is. It was mill worked with individual pieces. They put it up, they let it sit so, you know, and then they came back and repainted it. It really is very beautiful. It is just a gorgeous piece of work. The parking lot has been resurfaced and restriped. That's very nice. It looks very nice also. And then also we now have a sidewalk. So when you're walking down Caroline, you don't have to walk in through the parking lot any longer. We have a sidewalk that will take you up to the front door. So that's nice. And then this is what the outside looks like at night. Um, there is up lighting, which I think is very, very pretty in the neighborhood. Um, and uh, it, it just really adds. I, I will say that the neighborhood, I've gotten comments from the neighborhood, and they are very happy and very pleased and just, you know, just beside themselves about how nice the whole thing looks. Um, and uh, so people are very happy that it has been cleaned up. You can see the inside of the library. I have other pictures, but I did want to say that the funding for this was, um, a, aside from the technology, which was completely funded by the uh, Clayton Library Friends, in addition to other things, the funding came from the city of Houston through the um, Holocaust Renovation Project. So the Holocaust, when the Holocaust Museum got renovated, there was other funding that came back. So that was all part of the basically outside beautification of the museum district area neighborhood right there. So that's where the funding came from. The project was designed by the Houston Public Library Spaces Department. So that is super exciting. And we are just waiting to have you guys come in um, and to share and to do some of the other things that we have uh, to offer, including some of the books. But after all this happened, March came along, and we all, all of us, all of us at the library, all of us on this call, basically had to reinvent ourselves and try and figure out how we can turn this into an opportunity or how we can manage and how we can do things differently. That was the big thing. And it's been the big thing and the big discussion at the library also. How can we do what we do and do it differently and still continue to reach our community? I will say that it has been a big benefit for us with 80 people registered for this, for this presentation. You know that we could not get 80 people in that carriage house. We were already sitting like sardines. So this actually has been one of my goals is to be able to reach out and programming to a larger, wider audience. So the opportunity uh, was there and we really figured out how to do it. Nick and the friends were just instrumental in getting a lot of this stuff started. Nick is a great one and Jessica for when is this gonna happen? When is this gonna get done? What's the date? I happen to be a procrastinator, so I appreciate all that help and it's worked out really well. So what are we doing? We are in the library. We have been in the library all along. We are essential employees, city essential employees. Fortunately, we are in special collections. So we have administrative tasks to do. We can still, we can still order books. Again, thank you to the Clayton Library friends for the book budget. Um, we can still do our catalog conversion and reconciling the library catalog. We can create indexes. Um, I have, Melissa and I, our assistant manager, obviously are doing administrative things. Um, we're working on uh, some indexing with family search. We have added URLs for our family search book project into our library catalog. So you can click on the link from our library catalog and it'll take you right out to family search. We've done training. We are doing virtual reference and we're doing virtual programming. So let's talk about accessing us and accessing sources. We are operating as a remote reference desk. 
We'll talk about our online resources, our family search books, and then of course our virtual programming. Our remote reference desk, if you guys again have been with Face to Face, you know that we are answering the phone and we are doing email reference. We also have done face to face reference um, with Microsoft Teams. So Melissa and I especially have had a couple meetings online with, with uh, we have a customer who's working in Kentucky and we spent an hour with him on the phone. We held up books, um, we looked through books for him so we can have those face to face things. You do not have to have Microsoft Teams. So you can go ahead, you don't have to worry about that. We can set you up. We are doing reference and lookups for you. So if you are just need to get to a group of books or have a book that you're really interested in, we ask that you do narrow your focus. We do ask that you try to get to that research question. Who do you wanna know about? What do you wanna know? Where and when are you researching? Um, we, of course, just as if you were sitting in front of us, will do that dialogue with you and create that dialogue. We are here to listen. We're here to suggest what you can do, and we are here to help. If you have a specific source that you're looking for, you can ask us. Um, uh, we will scan your email. I also wanted to mention that I created a handout that has information in this. So the handout is in the... Um, I think it's the chat box or the question box. I'm not sure I can't see it. And then also it is on the Clayton Library Friends webpage. So uh, all these links that I'm going to be showing you on how to get to our newsletter and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about it because I did create hot links that will take you to the websites that I'm going to show you. In addition to it has our phone number and our reference uh, email address. So again, you know how I've said throughout the years I've been here is that I think that we offer the cheapest psychological counseling around because we will listen to your stories. So call us and we will still listen to your stories. We would love to listen to your stories. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to collaboratively work also. So we've talked a lot about the Clayton Library Friends face-to-face uh, -face program on Thursdays at two o'clock. We have our newsletters. Uh, different from the Clayton Library Friends newsletter, we have the Clayton Town Crier and the Clayton Extra. Uh, go over a little some online databases and we talked about contacting us directly. And then I mentioned visiting the CLF webpage for a document that has all these links. These are our genealogy resources. I wanted to remind everybody to, of course, get a library card. We're very familiar with this. You're going to click on research. You're going to go down to genealogy. One of the resources I wanted to highlight that um, was brought up to me, again, through the Clayton Library Friends face-to-face -face, is this Genealogy Connect. There are reference sources and other materials there, um, and it is in the genealogy research page. But look at some of these books, Early Virginia Immigrants, North Carolina Wills, but then also genealogy at a glance, and background health information. So quick facts on American cemeteries. You can search by location. You can go ahead and browse these collections and pull up titles, or you can search directly. So this is Genealogy Connect, and it's on the genealogy research page. One of the other things that I wanted to mention is the library subscribes to over 150 or nearly 150 online databases. And you know how I always talk about we do genealogy with blinders on sometimes, and I consistently remind us of these genealogy by database categories because there's help there. There's help there, and you could get you know stuck. You need background information. Um, you know your research is going to be expanded. You can discover new sources, understand the history your ancestors were a part of. Uh, there's almanacs, history, social sciences, encyclopedias, and more. One I wanted to specifically highlight, and this is in the um, magazines, scholarly journals, and publications resources. So instead of clicking on genealogy, when you go to that research page, over on the left-hand side, it says databases by category. There's a category that's magazines, scholarly journals, and publication resources. Inside magazines on is something called JSTOR. JSTOR is a scholarly journal article uh, uh, archive. Has the William and Mary Quarterly, Virginia Genealogist, and a lot of periodicals that are history related that you would not 
think of. So I did a search in JSTOR on Illinois cemeteries just to see what came up. What came up was an article out of historical archaeology about an African-American cemetery in New Philadelphia, Illinois. Now, it doesn't have the burial names there. It doesn't have the people that are there. But what it has is, is it has history of that cemetery in that area. It gives you information about traditions and it gives you even more history about New Philadelphia, Illinois. Again, we a genealogy is the pedigree chart. The family history are the stories and everything that we do with that, with those names, dates, and places in between the dashes. There are civil war, there's civil war information. I also did a search for <clears throat> Thompson Family Ohio. You can see right here, Thompson Family Ohio. Up came up was a narrative of Thomas McKeon Thompson in the Pennsylvania Magazine of History and Biography. So there are things to read and then there's your family history of this Thompson family in Ohio. So JSTOR is just one I wanted to highlight uh, along with um, there's in the encyclopedias, there's something called the Encyclopedia of Maritime History. You had seafaring ancestors, river faring ancestors. You might want to go there and look through and see what kind of history there is. You lived on, 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 on a river. Maybe there's some information where you can write your own story too. Don't forget your own story. We become ancestors. All right. Connecting with us. How can you get a hold of us and how you can how can you still feel a part of us? And how can we still feel a part of you? We have newsletters. We have the Clayton Town Crier, which is our quarterly newsletter, which is a source information newsletter, articles on Civil War, different topics. And then we also have our monthly newsletter, which is our Clayton Extra, which is our programming. They come through your email and they look like this. If you don't get something that looks like this, you probably are not subscribing. The link to subscribe to the newsletters is in the document that you have and then also in the document that's been mounted on the Clayton Library Friends webpage. You can see when you go to the newsletters for all interests, down on the bottom there on the right side, there's something that says special collections. Click on that and then you'll have the options to get our newsletter. This is an example of the most recent Clayton Town Crier, and you can see our articles, Finding African-American Ancestors in Civil War Records. Is there a doctor in the house? Information about another, some of our sources that we have, recorded books, and the Houston Chronicle Historical Archive. Our team writes these articles. Irene edits it, we send it, and then it comes to your mailbox. This is an article about recorded books and digital services in your genealogy. We have at the library, um, obviously electronic resources uh, that you would not necessarily think, when you think of eBooks, you wouldn't necessarily think that there's genealogy books there and, or magazines. There is a source called RB Digital that has over 30, 3,700 magazines. There's popular magazines, but there's also historical, archeological, geographical, and genealogy magazines. Some back titles are available, back, um, um, back issues are available. In addition to that, there's audio books, and there happens to be a 15 series course lecture called Discovering Your Roots, an introduction to genealogy that's taught by Coletta, John Philip Coletta. 15 courses, Discovering Your Roots, an Introduction to Genealogy. That is part of RB Digital. So again, the links to these, these the RB Digital and other things I'm gonna show you are in that handout. I went into um, RB Digital, um, at, no, yes, I went into RB Digital and I did a search for genealogy. Maybe the, and up came books. There also is another, another, oh no, wait a second, I'm sorry. There is another, 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 so we have RB Digital and Access 360. Access 360 has books. 
RB Digital has magazines. This is Access 360, and I did a search, search for genealogy. These are the books that came up. I went into RB Digital and I searched for magazines and I searched family history. And these are the two titles that came up. And then I searched family tree. And if you do not subscribe to family tree magazine, there's your subscription. These are all available with your library card. So that is Access 360 and RB Digital. Digital material that you can read, books and magazines. Again, handout. Link in the handout. I also wanted to remind you that I would be remiss if I did not mention our partnership with Family Search and the Family Search Digital Archive Library. There are over 500,000 books there. And we know that we are a partner, Fort Wayne. Um, there is a partner in Canada now. We have the, um, I think it's the Society of Genealogists Library in London. We are in there digitizing, Family Search is in there digitizing. I also want to remind you that when you click on search and you start putting your name in the box that comes up, the books are not searched. The books are not returned. You have to search the books separately or you go into the catalog and find a book and it will link out. A general search from that magic box search does not search the books. Also, I wanted to remind you that if when you find an image in the historic records, when you do the search and you get to those digital images, if you come up with a restricted image that says library affiliate and you need to be a library affiliate, then you, you can um, send us an email or call us and we will scan the images for you. I'm sorry, scan the images for you. I thought somebody was sending me a text, a message. So we, so, okay, so, all right, let's, I'm gonna, sorry. Remember the books, you have to search them separately. If you go into the digital images and when you get hit a restricted image, if that restricted image returns a dialogue box that says library affiliate, you can contact us and we will send you the images. It has to say library affiliate. The other thing I wanted to mention, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention was the wiki. I went to the wiki yesterday and I saw that it has a new look. But again, for education, you can click on an area that you're researching, you can click on a state and it will take you to that wiki page that will give you links to different record sources. Also, you can put in a subject here like Revolutionary War, church records, and it will return wiki articles so you can learn about what it is that you're researching there. Also, the Clayton Library Friends Facebook page. The Clayton Library Friends Facebook page is really active, and if you are on Facebook and you have not, liked the Clayton Library Friends, you should because you're missing a bunch of stuff that's super cool. So one of my colleagues, Joy at the library, in addition to a few other people, are posting different types of posts. So here's Joy who came up with information about the mass immigration from France. Here is an article about information about the History Hub, which is basically citizen archivists where you can read blog posts and learn about projects through the National Archives. And then you get to see cool pictures on Throwback Thursday. This is the building of the main library from 1987. And most importantly, when you go to the Clayton Library Friends Facebook page, you can find out about the upcoming event of Face to Face, and you can log in and get information there. Clayton Library Friends specific website. Here is the Friends to find out what's going on. You can click on events and you can see that information. So that would be through the Clayton Library Friends webpage. Additionally, if you want to find out what we were doing through the library, when you go to the Houston Public Library webpage, you can click on calendar up here. 
and up will come, or you can put in the word genealogy. When you click on calendar, cards will come up, or you can put in the word genealogy. The cards look like this. You scroll down, and you can see on our Fridays in August and September, we have Mitch pre um, presenting mobile device genealogy. Remember, on August 20th, he's going to be on genealogy face-to-face -face with the friends, so you get a little taste of that. And then in September, we have Frank Smith doing our thinking like a genealogist using your five senses. If you've never seen Frank do a presentation, you should watch Frank do a presentation because he does a great job, as does Mitch. And then this is a really great presentation, as is Mitch's. Mine are just okay. These are the really cool ones. Mine are okay. And then let's talk about Family History Month. Well, obviously it's not going to be the same this year. Um, you know, as I said, I can't tell you when it is that we're going to open. And I will say that we are not going to have the annual lock-in that uh, we partnered with, with in Waco, even though we were doing webinar presentations. Bill Buckner has decided to postpone it till next year. But what we are doing are the, our Friday lectures at 2 o'clock. And here is a taste of two Fridays. We have, there are actually five Fridays in October. We're going to have Dana Leeds, who is developed the Leeds method of the DNA coloring, color clustering, which helps genealogists sort and interpret their DNA test results. I don't even, I'm 99% Eastern European, but I have not reached out to my cousins. I suppose I should watch this presentation. And Paula Stewart Warren actually will be doing a presentation on Native American research, but she has a blog as does Dana. And they also are links, there's blog links in the handouts. And Paula timely just did on the 14th information about JSTOR. So those are our little tastes of Family History Month. And then sign up for their blogs and watch their blogs also. Additionally, the Texas State Genealogy Society Conference. First of all, I'd like to thank the Texas State Genealogy Society once again for bringing to the partner societies, the ability to present this. We sure have taken adv adv advantage of it and we are very grateful. And then the 60th anniversary celebration, remembering your heritage virtual this year. And if you attended, if you were lucky to attend last week's virtual presentation and thought that was a bang up presentation through the Texas State Genealogy Society, wait till November. 32 sessions and it's gonna be a bang up conference. So um, what I would like to do now is, is I'm going to remind everybody to be safe, take care, mask up, and I knew you were waiting for the cat photo from me, and here's how to contact us. So mask up, be safe, contact us, and I really appreciate everybody showing up today. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Sue, got a couple of questions for you. This is Susan Ball. Um, yes. And the first person wanted to know, and I think you answered this, but I'm going to ask it again in a slightly different way. The question is, are you doing family search lookups for items that are not viewable from home but can be viewed in the library? You mentioned images. What about books and things like that? Yes, yes. If you, if it, if you find something and we have a book, image, yes. Just call us and ask us, yes. Excellent. Another question uh, was from Teresa Rundell. She asked, she said, she downloaded the RB app and when she tried to check out an audiobook, it gave her a message that ebooks and audiobooks have been moved to the Libby app. And she wanted yes. to know about that. Well, well, the answer to that question is yes, they have been moved to the Libby app. And the only reason I know that is because I read the notice. So <laughs> that's on the web page. So I would think that. Um, you know, I would think you have to, I'll put on my, my camera, I can't see myself, but I would think that you have to download the Libby app. So, um, Melissa is the one who, Melissa and maybe Mitch, but Melissa does that a lot. And so if you can't download the Libby app, call us and we'll get you to Melissa. 
Okay, that's outstanding. So you've got a resource there to help with Libby problems. So that would be great because I have one myself. Yep. So <laughs> I'll just talk a little bit <laughs> um, about it. Yeah. So um, then um, Dana wanted to, Dana Leeds wanted to know how do you access the list of books held by Clayton Library? I don't, I, you know, I don't know if they're on the Clayton Library Friends website. Pat Metcalf, that's a good question. Um, there might be a list. Dana, send me, send me an email or call me and I'll find out. I'll look on their website and see, or you can look on their website and see. If not, I can put you in, in touch with somebody, with Pat Metcalf. Okay, so I don't know if she's asking about the books that you have in, for sale necessarily as your actual catalog. Well, our actual catalog is through HoustonLibrary.org. So the library catalog, the books that we have on the shelf are books, not the books for sale, but our books. You'll go to our library catalog, the books that are for sale and the book sale that is through the Clayton Library Friends, and that's how we got to find out where the list is. Okay, so on the Clayton Library, can you specify, I mean, on the Houston Library uh, catalog, can you specify the branch as uh, Clayton Library and restrict the viewing to just those books you guys have? Yes. When you, you go to HoustonLibrary.org and you click in the, the click, do a search in the catalog, which is in the upper right-hand corner, when you get your initial results on the left hand side you'll be able to see that there is a way to limit the books to clayton those books are not for sale <laughs> only the books that the clayton library friends have the clayton Absolutely. library friends have books yeah the clayton library felt friends sell duplicate books that we have on the shelf thanks for the clarification that makes lots of sense yeah. okay and another person yeah. asked any advice for out-of-state friends members who aren't members of the houston library system for accessing your resources etc well you can call us okay by all means there's there's but if you're talking about the databases when you click on get a my link card in the upper left hand corner it is forty dollars a year i think and twenty dollars for six months so you can get access to a library card. Anybody in Texas can get a Houston Public Library card. Out of state, there is that small fee, but you get to it through get a MyLink card. So if you have that, that MyLink card, you don't have to be a member of Clayton Library Friends to access those online resources. No. We are two, you know, we're two separate, yeah, we're two separate entities, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we want okay. you to be a member of the Clayton Library Friends too. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I I strongly encourage being a, Houston, uh, a Clayton Library friend because they do they fund the things that you can't get otherwise. You know, they add the the icing on the cake in the extras. Well, we I mean, frankly, honestly, there was twenty five thousand dollars devoted to book material purchase last year through the Clayton Library Friends. The library in the city provided us with six thousand dollars. Wow. Um, and I would also like to mention becoming a member of the Texas State Genealogy Society so they could continue to provide this lovely resource to us. I appreciate that little shout out as well. <laughs> well, I think that's the last question we have. So I think that uh, that uh, Linda had a few words at the end she wanted to share. Thank you very much. Uh, I will just say regarding the donated duplicate books. Uh, that Clayton Library Friends sells. Uh, Pat Metcalf wrote a an article uh, about uh, those donated duplicate books and how to obtain them and how to purchase them in our latest newsletter. So if you'll go back and look at that, you can see how to get that. And that newsletter is also on the uh, Clayton Library Friends website. Sue Kaufman, that was a great presentation. Um, it was so interesting and I uh, love seeing the, the pictures of the renovation. Uh, you all are doing uh, fascinating work and it's wonderful to know how available you are to us. Um, and I learned lots of ideas um, to uh, follow through on digitally. So thank you very much. I wanna thank everybody uh, for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you um, on Thursdays at Genealogy Face to Face, and we'll see you at our annual meeting in November. Thank you very much.